Good morning, Colfax. Ryan Ferris here once again, joined by my friend Sam Cooper, bringing you a brand new episode of CTV. That's right, Ryan, and today we're going to kick it off with a story about Colfax's very own art club. Now, this is a group that meets after school to bring new life to our school and beauty to our campus. They do this primarily through murals that they paint around Colfax. Reporter Ty Brazelton and camera operator Maddie Havlick had a chance to go check those out. Art Club or Open Studio, a club of about 5 to 10 people which meets Wednesdays from 3 to 4.30, aims to add more beauty to our otherwise already gorgeous campus. The past murals that Art Club made was um, on our, in front of our baseball fields, There's, it says Falcons, um, we did that one last spring. Um, and in the fall, we worked on Stand Behind the Green and White, which is on the football field on the track down there. The murals that are currently being painted in the hallway outside the computer lab um, are two murals that are photography related because they're outside the photo room as well. Murals throughout time have been used in a variety of ways, whether by affecting the way people feel or bringing light on the diversity of culture. The oldest examples of murals being made by the Maya civilizations who built the Mayan calendar. Art Club's aspirations, however, are to beautify and unify our school throughout the power of murals. We are making murals to help beautify the school. Um, just also just give a little more interest into spaces. We just want to beautify the campus, um, engage a little bit of the student spirit that we see. We want to represent um, multiple different interests and groups on campus. Throughout the years, cities like San Francisco, Oakland, and Philadelphia have cultivated, educated, and engaged their communities with murals just as our art club has started doing with their murals. This is Maddie Havlick and Ty Brazelton reporting for CTV. That really is amazing. Make sure to keep an eye out for those while you're walking around campus. Well, I for one am looking forward to seeing what art club does this term. We're going to take a quick break, and after that we'll be back with the stories about our new basketball staff, along with a look at our new softball coach. It's a new year for Colfax High School's basketball program. Let's take a look at reporter Ryan Santos's and camera operator Jack Watt's take on our men's basketball team. The Colfax Boys Basketball Program has a rich history of success to include five section championships and 15 league championships. After two seasons of missing the playoffs and a coaching change, the players and coaches are working hard to get back to their winning ways. Former Colfax standout and current teacher Terry O'Keefe was named head men's basketball coach in the spring of 2015. Senior captains Kyle Detweiler and Matthew Harshman have played in the program for four years and were both named to the All-PVL second team for their efforts in the past season. Uh, everything's pretty much changed. We have a new coach, we have a new style of play, and he brought a definite new culture to the team. Uh, it's bittersweet. Um, I'm kind of bummed the way uh, the way it ended, with the way we ended the league. But I'm glad that we won on senior night, and um, uh, I'm hopeful for the team next year and the guys coming up. First team All PVL sophomore Garen O'Keefe, son of the head coach will help usher in what the graduating seniors started this year. I think we're definitely ambitious, looking to work hard and do some big things, maybe in the PVL and beyond. With the JV team amassing 16 wins to only four losses, the future looks bright for Colfax basketball in the O'Keefe era. 
With cameraman Jack Watts, I'm Ryan Santos for CTV. Thank you, Jack and Ryan, for that view of our very own boys basketball team. Next up, CTV had a chance to talk with our new softball coach and how she'll bring new life to our Lady Falcons. Here's reporter Trent Detner and camera operator Ethan Nestor. Colfax High School softball girls has had the honor of welcoming their new coaches to the team. I'm super excited that we have a varsity coach. I um, love the fact that she's uh, young and energetic and passionate about the game. Uh, she's organized. Um, she's brought new life and excitement uh, for the girls. And, you know, change is good sometimes. Mr. Hyman isn't the only one who is super excited to have a new coach. Even veteran players admit to how much they enjoy her. What I like about the new coaches is that they're young and they really seem to know what they're doing and they're also allowing us girls to have more freedom. For example, as a catcher, I can throw down and pick off and stuff without them telling me to. Not only are the coaches loved, but they have a different way of coaching their team. Reporting for CTV with photographer Ethan Easter, I'm Trent Detmer. We'll set time in our show again. We're going to hand it off to John and John for our CTV Sports Highlight. Hey Colfax, it's good to be back for our second official sports show of the year. I'm joined again by John McCann in the Pucci Pavilion. Today is the finals for the 8th annual ASB Dodgeball Tournament and CTV has been covering all the action. That's right John, and we'll be showing a highlight piece of the tournament next week. Yeah, that'll be sweet. Okay, let's take a look back at last week's sports. Tennis had their second match at home versus Marysville. Colfax 6, Marysville 3. And our girls' soccer team looked good in a scrimmage against Golden Sierra with a 4-1 final score with Maya and Jenny Fasugi, Annabelle Fonte, and Abby Manning all scoring to win the game. The girls' basketball team played the Marysville Indians in the first round of the CIF section championships. Reporter Colton Reeves was at the game Wednesday. Here's how our girls did. This week's first round playoff game featured number 6 Colfax and number 11 Marysville, right here in the Poochie Pavilion. The game started off looking as if it would be a tight game. Four minutes in, Colfax was on top, 7-6. to six. Colfax aggressively attacked the basket over the course of the next minute, resulting in three trips to the line and five of six shots. AC Willis established herself for the end of the first quarter, and Colfax was up for a good 18-6. to six. The second quarter saw the Lady Falcons offense clicking on all cylinders and making scores hard to come by for the visiting Indians, resulting in a 37-15 halftime advantage for Colfax. In the third quarter, Kylie Bauer and Courtney Kirkland combined for 14 points, putting the Falcons up 53-28 going into the fourth quarter. A stifling Colfax defense forced Marysville to lose any hope of a comeback, and the Lady Falcons offense kept producing, including a set of free throws from Kylie Bauer, resulting in a 63-37 final score. Uh, I think we performed uh, really well to our game plan. Uh, we watched a lot of film, and uh, they're a team with a lot of shooting guards, and we, they do a lot of on-ball screens to get, to, to get those guards open. So we worked a lot on that the last few days and performed really well. I wouldn't change a thing. Outcome was nice. Our goals were to execute offensively and to try and keep 12 out of the paint, which AC did a, a great job most of the game, and to uh, keep somebody close to their shooters. Reporting from CTV with cameraman John McCann, I'm Colton Reeves. Great job, girls. Next up, our Alpine ski team was at Sugar Bowl last Friday for their last league race. Sam Cooper and Trent Detmer went up the hill to take a look as the team races towards the state championships. We're here today at Sugar Bowl Resort with the Colfax Alpine Ski Team to see how they can find success on the slopes and have a good time. <laughs> Over the past few months, the team has been to six different league races and they look forward to state championships in March. Well, I think race day is the most intense part. When you're, when you're at the top of the race course, you're kind of on an island. You know, it, you're, a, you're a sport that's a, kind of a victim of gravity. And so when you're in the start house and you're in the gate, and it's you, I think it's intimidating for a lot of these kids. You're just so nervous, like, but it, it's, it's a good nervous because it means something. Once you start going, even though people have cowbells and they're cheering, you don't hear anything. Part of their success is due to Coach McLaughlin's unique philosophy on coaching. I, I like to um, 
think of it as just everybody falling in love with the sport. I think that uh, the racing aspect of it is great, but what we're really trying to do is um, have the kids fall in love with the sport, have it become a life sport. I mean, we use uh, racing certainly as a platform to become a better skier, but in the long run, I want kids really thinking back and saying those were really, really fun years. I could care less about my placement today. I'm just out here to have fun today. Everyone's having a blast. The biggest impact skiing's had on me has probably just been my love of the mountains and the snow. And it's been a big thing for my family because um, my sister, my dad, and I, we all go up and ski. I've always had love for skiing. You know, my kids ski and I uh, had an opportunity to coach the high school ski team, so uh, I have the best gig in the world around here, I'll be honest with you. I, I have great kids. I've got tremendous parent support. Um, I have tremendous community support as well as administration around the high school here. I couldn't ask for a better deal, honestly. With state championships coming soon ahead, the Alpine ski team is grateful for the chance to once again enjoy themselves on the slopes. Reporting for CTV with photographer Trent Detmer, I'm Sam Cooper. Thank you, Sam and Trent, for that story, and the results of that race are in, and the following skiers have made it to state championships. For the girls, Caroline Simmons, Parker Francella, and Britta Boblet. And for the guys, Logan McLaughlin, Spencer Gutierrez, Seth McLaughlin, and Austin Conway, and Zach Fages. Also, girls soccer heads to the Cal Spring Classic in Woodland over the next weekend, and next week, tennis, baseball, soccer, softball, and track will all be in action on the road. That's all for us, Colfax. We'll see you next week. But until then, I'm John Hill. And I'm John McCann. And we're signing, signing off. off. Thanks, John. Well, everyone, it's that time again where we have to say goodbye for now. That's right. But we'll be back next week with brand new stories for you right here from CTV. This has been Ryan Ferris and Sam Cooper. See you next time, Colfax.